Welcome to this presentation on audiovisual support. I think you will enjoy this presentation and some of the suggestions made here will be helpful as you set up your presentation, whether online or face-to-face -face, in a seminar or training session. I look forward to your feedback as we go forward in the course on how to really support presentations with the use of good audiovisuals. We will look at some appropriate ways to support trainings through audio and visuals. In this quote by Barzett, a good set of visuals show appropriate and accurate images and copy. Visuals support the content rather than replace it. That's important. Visuals support the content rather than replace it. So I think that's something that sh we should take to heart as we prepare the information so as not to overwhelm the viewers with the visuals we may use or the slide transitions, but that it's used to support and uphold the communication that you are trying to get across with your content rather than the visuals being the focus of the presentations. The first thing you want to do when adding audiovisuals audio is to start with your learning objective. Decide if the content you are teaching would be better enhanced with visual images or through the use of a sound or a drawing or some cartoons or a video clip. You want to select audiovisual materials that respect the copyright of others. So if you're borrowing something, um, now they have Creative Commons license. Even YouTube is doing that now, which will give credit back to the author of the material. But if you are pulling something from an article, you do want to make sure to provide proper credit and citations um, of these materials, whether it's audio, visual, or another form of media material. Also select the right type of image for your content based on the learning objectives. For example, if it is a bar chart comparing magnitude or a line graph showing a trend, you don't want to get those reversed by showing a line graph to show magnitude or bar graph showing trend. Select the proper tool to communicate your information. Pie charts are used to show relationship to the whole symbols to illustrate complex ideas, schematics to demonstrate process flows, drawings to illustrate functionality or tape to show ideas, uh, references. Cartoons can demonstrate the context based on a specific idea. It's really just support, framework, a skeleton, for the content that you are getting across. So start with the learning objective, then consider what type of audio visual to support that objective. Here are some advantages and disadvantages of using audio visual support. Copyright is a big thing, so make sure to get permission and or give credit to information that belongs to others. Uh, there is some leniency when it comes to using the information in the teaching capacity, but you want to be careful. So double check the proper protocol for the proper use of the information that is utilized from places like YouTube or another environment where you can use someone else's material. Advantages um, also include engagement for your learners. Audiovisuals can do a good job of communicating your point in a creative way. Video clips and audio clips are great ways to illustrate your point, to illustrate content you want to get across to the learner. In addition to the copyright requirements, the learning curve is another. It's important to make sure the information is being used proper, properly, that it's not being used to take away from the content that we are trying to communicate or that it is not overwhelming for the student, but that it is something that will actually enhance your content. So select cross-platform technology, that which can be used on different types of technology, not only on a Mac or only on a PC, for example. You want to make sure that the information can be viewed appropriately. Also, the cost is another issue. Do you have to pay for it? or can you use it for free? 
Is there a cost for the students to access the audiovisual uh, you are using? So these are a few things you want to consider. Let's talk a little bit about how to prepare your slides for presentation. You want to make sure when you are doing your slides and when you are passing out handouts and things like that, you want to make sure your images support the handout materials. For example, your slides should reinforce the directions to your learning activities. Prepare, prepare slides with questions to process the information or to debrief an activity and promote interaction. That way the learner can take some of those ideas that you may have presented and look at the questions that you might have, uh, have on your slide and be able to process and work through those to determine how they might implement that information into their environment. Also, when you are doing your slides, the landscape-oriented slides are easier to use and easier for your learners to see than portrait slides. It is an easier orientation for those who are viewing your slides. You want to limit the number of slides. You don't want to have 20 or 30 slides in your presentation. And make sure to use font style and size so that the slides are viewable. The literature suggests using 32 point font size for presentation slides, but this may vary because you don't want your information to be too big or too small. Also consider whether to use all caps or upper lowercase letters like you would in normal writing. Make sure to maintain consistent use of transitions and visuals in your presentation so that you are not doing things that are distracting. Participants can get caught up in the back and forth movement of the slides, which can distract the audience. One last note, when using the animations for the words, the way they pop out, consider using a standard type animation for each of your slides with the text on it. These are some practical things to think about as you prepare your slides. And then also make sure that the number of words on the slides aren't too many. I've seen some slides where they are trying to get so much content on a slide. Um, the words on the slide just need to be there as prompts and basically serve as an outline such as point one, point two, point three. Um, and does not include the A, B, and C. So you may put the A, B, C points, A, B, C, and D on a different slide to show and discuss. The slide is there, remember, to prompt the presenter with what they are going to talk about and discuss. You can have a script, if necessary, in the notes area of your presentation, and you can use that rather than try to put so much content on one slide. It can be overwhelming or cumbersome for the audience to look at. The goal is to keep the focus of the message, and that's really the point of how you are going to use audio visuals to support your presentation. You don't want to take away, but you want to help focus the learners to the content you are having, you are trying to get across and using the videos, the clips, the cartoons, the images, the audio pieces, all of that should be used to keep the focus on the content message of your presentation for that slide. Keep that in mind as the golden rule for your use of audiovisual support. Finally, I thought it would be good to discuss the use of color in your presentations, your backgrounds, formatting, if you're going to use color at all, and for your visuals to support your training. Green is analytical, precise, brings out opinions, resistance to change, ha um, has that, it has that type of connotation. Where blue is considered calm, traditional, reduces blood pressure, and it's easier to read. Uh, you will often see this color in text and web pages. Red is considered power. It has a connotation for impact, impulse, and intensity. Yellow is considered bright, cheerful, hope, 
and restless. Purple is mystical, magic, and irresistible. It has the connotation of delight and lighthearted. And finally, brown or earth tone is considered passive, foundation, a desire for home, solid roots depending where you are from. But these are just a few words of direction on how you would use color in a presentation and being more purposeful in the color you use and why you're using them. One thing I do want to make note of is that the way I've illustrated the meanings of color is for American culture. Realize that colors have different meanings for different cultures. So if you are presenting in a different culture, you want to understand how color is represented in that culture as you are putting together a presentation. Also consider your objectives when selecting specific colors as backgrounds, letters, and images in relation to the feeling or concept that is being projected. These are a few things to consider as you select the different colors for your fonts and backgrounds as you move forward in your presentations. As we conclude this presentation on audiovisual support, we discussed some effective ways to use audiovisuals in your presentations. We also talked about how to use audio and images and other clips, um, the use of fonts, colors, and things like that to support your content rather than replace it. Audiovisuals should enhance the presentation and not be a distraction. Um, keep this in mind as you go forward. Use these things. They can be very helpful for your learners to help break the tension of all the text. You want to integrate visuals, but make sure that it keeps the focus on the message.